Hi, my name is Maureen Strickland. I'm the Social Enterprise Development Specialist for the Social Enterprise and Entrepreneurship One Social Enterprise Partnership in Northern Ontario. And this webinar is the last in our series of nine webinars. Um, and it is Peer Mentoring Circles, Mutual Support for Social Enterprise. I do have Zach Lowe here today, Research Assistant at Nordic Institute. Um, if anybody has a question, please write it in the chat box. Zach is monitoring that and we'll make sure our questions get answered. And everybody is on mute, so you will need to ask questions or make comments through the chat box. So with all our web webinars, in case this is the first time you've watched one, um, we do go over an overview of the um, One Social Enterprise Partnership, and then we'll launch into a discussion on peer mentoring circles. Uh, this webinar should take about 15 minutes. And here we have the agenda um, where we're going to basically give you hints, tips on how you can start a circle and how you can make it succeed. So the social um, entrepreneurship, social enterprise and entrepreneurship Northern Region Partnership. This partnership is led by Nordic Institute, which is a community economic development research institute at Algoma University. Um, and it is also affiliated with the Community and Social Development Program here at Algoma. Um, Nordic is the lead, but our partnership is made up of all the one members in Northern Ontario. So those would be the Small Business Enterprise Centers, the Innovation Centers, and the Campus Linked Accelerators. So on our steering committee, we have Timmins Economic Development Center as our Small Business Enterprise Center representative. We have the Northwest Innovation Center in Thunder Bay as the Regional Innovation Center partner. And we have ULaunch here in the Sioux as the Youth Entrepreneurship Campus Link Accelerator partner. We also have Paro Center for Women's Enterprise, who are based in Thunder Bay. And uh, in relation to this specific topic, Paro is well known for the creation of peer lending circles for women entrepreneurs throughout Northern Ontario. The... Um, this one partnership is funded by the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development and Growth. And the goal of the partnership is to give the service providers across the region the tools and resources to assist social enterprises and social entrepreneurs when they need business support. So our area for this partnership stretches from Perry Sound all the way to the Manitoba border up to the James Bay Coast and everything in between. And we're recording these webinars as one way of being able to provide the same resources to people who live in remote and rural communities who aren't able to come out to um, uh, workshops um, and training that might be in communities, um, in larger communities. So we always talk about what is a social enterprise um, for all these webinars. So once again, I will reiterate that social enterprises have a mission to address social, environmental, economic, or cultural changes by reinvesting their profits above their operational expenses back into their mission, and they use a triple bottom line, people, planet, profit, to measure their success. Social enterprises are not a business form. They need to take on a, a, a more traditional business form, which could include nonprofits, cooperatives, sole proprietorships, partnerships, and corporations. So launching into the main content of this webinar around peer mentoring. Um, so the whole idea, um, why we're holding this webinar on this subject matter, is that peer-to-peer -peer support or in a group um, can be very helpful for social enterprises, for social entrepreneurs as they're trying to launch their, um, their business. So peer mentoring itself, it's a relationship. It's a relationship between you and a peer mentor. In this ca case, we're talking about groups. So it's a relationship that you establish with fellow social entrepreneurs in your area. It's, it's an opportunity to share your experience, um, share your knowledge, share your skills. It's also an opportunity for growth, both for yourself and for your business. And we'll get into that in a uh, bit more um, specifically a little later. Uh, peer mentoring and peer mentoring circles are, have been used worldwide in a range of environments and have shown to be successful. So for instance, many uh, school settings have peer counseling, for instance. Um, often in larger workplaces, you're given a peer 
mentor um, in your department when you start working. Uh, peer lending circles. Um, I've worked. I've worked in England. There were peer men, peer lending circles in England as well as we're aware of the peer lending circles for women entrepreneurs throughout Northern Ontario. Um, very successful model. Um, so we have we have learned from um, experience with peer groups, um, and they do work. So we can offer some tips on how to get one grassroots one. You know, you don't need somebody else to organize it for you. A grassroots peer, peer circle to provide that support that can be self-sustaining and have a lot of benefits to social entrepreneurs. So some um, kind of general framework um, for a peer mentoring circle. It is a group. You need at least three people for it to become a peer mentoring circle as opposed to peer mentoring relationship. Um, ideally, the group would be, you know, anywhere from five to eight. People, may drape, people might drop out, so you still have a solid group, or you don't want too many people, harder to manage. Um, it, sh it should be based on, on the agreement that you're there to provide support to one another, whether it's in the form of sharing your experience, um, having an open and honest and... Uh, group of people who you can trust who you just want to talk about the trials and tribulations of trying to get a social enterprise off the ground um, and in this case the shared interest would be around potentially social enterprise but certainly uh, peer circles like these can sprout up around all sorts of issues um, as an example uh, I belong to a peer circle um, that's very grassroots and we basically meet regularly and I would say broadly our interests are around um, self-sufficiency in some sense. Um, so what are the other benefits of having a peer mentoring circle? Well for one thing, if there's seven people in the circle besides yourself, then you have access to all their experience and expertise. Everybody out there has something that they're good at, that they have specialized knowledge in, um, and that ability to share it with others, I would say builds confidence in yourself, um, which, is, which is one of the um, benefits of belonging to and, and starting a peer mentoring circle. Even to start a circle up from the grassroots builds confidence in the members who are able to start that circle and maintain it. Um, the other benefit is you're gonna build networks. You have the women or the, or the people in your social entrepreneurial circle and of course, they would know people as well. So even though those other people might not be part of the circle, um, it's gonna help you meet, meet other people in your community who might have experience or expertise that would help you, or they're gonna, your people in the circle are gonna identify that you would be somebody who could help somebody else outside the circle. Um, definitely a fully functioning circle. There's trust within the members of that group where they feel free to share information. Um, talk freely, no judgment. Um, these circles, these grassroots circles builds, builds community. Um, it builds community in the sense the circle is starting to build a community on its own, but often these circles, they might start to do things outside of what they're doing. Like you could, for instance, related to our la one of our last webinars uh, earlier today, you might start one of these peer mentoring social enterprise circles and then decide it wouldn't it be great if we did a if we sponsored a community asset mapping session in our town so that you know we can bring other people into this idea of meeting community needs and building on our assets through social enterprise so that kind of thing builds opportunities for those involved and definitely these can be grassroots you don't need your um you know community economic development officer to start the circle you can start it yourself with uh, um, yourself. A couple of people might be interested. You start talking, you get the ball rolling, and all of a sudden, there you are. You have a peer mentoring circle. Um, so some key success. Definitely, you need a champion, and you need an organizer, ideally the same person. The group I belong to, there's one person who always organizes the next meeting. We always have it at her house, and we always have a potluck. So. Um, you need a driver, somebody with the time, the commitment to um, make the next meeting happen. As I said, 
good size is five to eight. Um, if you only have a few people, you might not have the momentum to keep the circle going. But, and if you have too many people, it might become too dissipated. Ideally, you're looking for the right mix of people. Uh, you're going to, people have a gut feeling. They know if somebody's like-minded, they can get along with them. They can trust them in, um, they can trust them with knowledge about their business. They can trust them with um, things they're struggling with around getting their enterprise off the ground. Um, it's nice to have a mix of maybe different um, social entrepreneurs with different social missions in there. It's nice to have different age group, uh, different, um, uh, you know, different stage of business development um, because then you can sort of learn from all different directions. Having a democratic is very uh, good key to success. Everybody, just like in a co-op, one member, one vote. Um, your circle could be, should be, I think, democratic. Everybody has the opportunity to comment on how things are going, to suggest topics, et cetera, et cetera. That there's a shared vision. None of this has to be formal. You don't need to write bylaws or anything like that. You just kind of, when you have your first meeting, you kind of talk things through um, around uh, how you might communicate in the meetings, how you're going to go about organizing your next meeting, um, what, your, what your kind of broad scope is around what the vision is. Are you there to be mutual support in the sense of, um, uh, you know, asking each other questions, getting feedback, or do you want to have, bring in outside speakers? You know, you kind of make sure you're all on the same page about how you want this to proceed. Um, as I said, can be formal or informal, but it's grassroots. It definitely can be informal as everybody has the same understanding. And the key is mutual respect. The, um, the ideas around communication that are presented in the community asset mapping around, um, you know, just general rules of communication um, go a long way to helping foster that, especially in your first few meetings where you maybe don't know each other very well. You should kind of just set the stage that, you know, there's no interrupting, there's no judgment around what people say, everybody has a turn, that kind of thing. So those are keys to success if you decide to start one of these circles. Um, so how do you get started? Find that champion. If this uh, webinar kind of makes you interested in the idea, um, maybe you know that you're not the right person, you don't have the capability right now, you're too busy, but you, you would be very interested in belonging to one and attending once a month, start talking to your fellow social entrepreneurs, see if there's somebody out there who has the time to be the champion, to pull the first um, meeting together. And then once you've done that, um, meet, have your first meeting, make some of those key decisions. How are we gonna communicate? When are we gonna meet? Um, what's our, what are kind of the bigger uh, goal of having this support network? And then just start, meeting regularly. And if you do form um, one of these uh, peer mentoring circles of social entrepreneurs in your local area, please go to our webpage, send us a message through our, um, through the contact us page, because we would really like to know that you have started this and we'd happily provide resources or anything you might want for it um, and keep us in the loop. So um, really, just need, if you want to do it, just go for it. Um, it's something you can do without anybody, anybody's support. You can just do it on your own. So if you wouldn't mind, we do have a uh, evaluation forms for all of these webinars. Uh, Zach has put this link in the chat box. You could go to it and provide us some feedback. That would be great. Um, and if there are any questions, um, you can ask now or you can contact us through the, um, the webpage. Are there any questions, Zach? Okay, we're just gonna wait a couple of seconds here, see if any questions pop up. And if not, um, this is the last of our nine webinars. They're all going to be uploaded onto the webpage in 10 business days. And um, feel free to share them around with your fellow social entrepreneurs. Thank you.